Why are we podcasting? That's a good question. We were asked by some friends, why would you do that? The answer is that we knew from early on that we were... Has your marriage been shattered by sexual betrayal? Are you wondering if there's any possible way to save your marriage, or even if you want to? Is there just the tiniest glimmer of hope that you and your spouse can work it out, but you have no clue how or where to start? Hello, and welcome to Beyond Broken Vows podcast. We're your hosts, Johnny and Emily Spiegelmeyer, two formerly seriously broken people who have been called by God to share our story of redemption and the hope that lies within every story that's fully surrendered to God. And we have been where you are, my friends. As a result of adultery fueled by pornography, the marriage vows we had exchanged as newlyweds were eventually shattered. However, we are here together to let you know that this devastation we experienced was actually a gift. On our show, we will be sharing the resources we found invaluable on our road to reconciliation and recovery. We'll tackle the topics of marriage, faith in God, infidelity, porn addiction, and recovery. We will also be taking questions from you, our awesome audience. So if you're ready to move from pain-filled todays into hope-filled tomorrows, grab your favorite beverage and spend a little time with us. We want you to know that your story matters and that there is hope for your marriage through Christ Jesus. Marriage is redeemed. Hearts renewed. On Beyond Broken Vows podcast. Hey, everybody. Welcome to our first episode of our podcast. Oh, my goodness. It's just so exciting, but also terrifying. Uh, We are here trying to tell our story. This is so new for us, and we've never done anything like this before. So to make it easier on ourselves, this first episode, we decided to do a question answer type of format. We're trying to get used to the microphone this foreign entity that's sitting between Emily and I right now. We don't really know what to do with it. We're staring at it. We're talking weird sometimes. (laughs) Yeah, it's hard to talk to people you can't see. (laughs) So we're just going to go ahead and ask some questions of each other so that you guys can learn a little bit about who we are and why we're here. So the very first question is, Emily, who are we? That's a good question. Um, We are a couple in our 50s. We've been married for uh, almost 36 years, and we have three gorgeous children. They're grown now. Two of them are married and have children, and one of them is engaged to be married. And we have five great, awesome, beautiful grandchildren. That's kind of who we are in a nutshell. But uh, right now, we are living the dream. Yeah, we're living on five acres right now. We moved to the country from the city just a couple of years ago. And like I said, we're living on five acres, beautifully covered with trees, big, tall trees. It's what sold Emily on the place. Yeah, I love the trees. You know, it's just a a new way of life, and we're really digging it. (laughs) We're considering ourselves maybe newbie homesteaders because we're uh, collecting animals, like lots of animals. I never thought I was an animal person like this, other than dogs, but... Yeah, um, I have peacocks. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, you do. When I saw this beautiful meadow-type front lawn that we have, I was just envisioning seeing peacocks just laying in the grass and and strutting around and and showing off their beautiful feathers. And so that is the first animal that we, uh, you know, embarked on. Actually, we brought our two little Maltese dogs out here with us. They had been with us for 10 years before that in the city. Well, let's not forget about our really big dog, Brody. We uh, got ourselves a great Pyrenees to watch over the peacocks. Right, yeah. And he is big. He's about 130 pounds, and he is such a puppy. Oh, my goodness. He's, uh, what now, almost two? Almost. But uh, And it's starting to calm down a little bit, but he's great. We really love him, and everybody loves him. He has people that come visit him, <laughs> right. you know, instead of us, so... Uh, Yeah, and then what was next? We got ponies. We did get ponies. We got some rescue ponies. I did not imagine myself having ponies. I really actually wanted a donkey when I was going to get a bigger animal. And we ended up with these rescue ponies on Christmas Day. We named them Nut and Honey. One's a miniature horse and one's a pony. And they are just super fun. 
We love to look out the window and watch them graze. I really love the trees around here. I love the plants. I've actually started my own personal plant nursery where I've dug plants up from the parts of the property and I put them in there and I propagate them and I'm, I'm getting ready for a time when we can fence off certain areas to keep the animals out and they don't chew our plants up or just walk right over them. But eventually I'll be able to do a landscape. I've been uh, landscaping professionally for the last 25 years. The animals are great fun, but we also like, you know, to have our own space where we can do things with the grandkids and, we, you know, we have lots of big plans for future swimming pools and playscapes and things like that. So we're really enjoying ourselves out here. But next question I wanted to ask is, why are we podcasting? That's a good question. We were asked by some friends, why would you do that? The answer is that we knew from early on that we were going to be telling this story. Emily and I have been in ministry, each of us, pretty much our whole lives, and certainly for the greatest portion of our adult life. And we know that stories that people have are always something that's meant to help somebody else. Now we find ourselves in the middle of this really big story. And we've kind of known from the beginning of this that somehow, somewhere, God was going to use this and that we were going to talk about it in some format. I have to admit that podcasting was never on my radar. I have been a pulpit preacher, and I imagined that we would maybe be talking in front of a church or things like that, but podcast wasn't on my radar. What about you? Yeah, I mean, it wasn't on mine either, but you know, after the devastation of what happened to us and how I felt about myself after that, I really kind of lost a lot of confidence mm -hmm. in myself. And for the last 15 years, or actually it's been now 18 years, I have had my own business helping people simplify their nutrition. And I loved doing that. That was something that I was really passionate about. I really still am passionate about that. But I felt like I needed to do something that was less public. I was really kind of in a position where I felt like I wanted to hide from the world for a while. I was injured, I was licking my wounds. <laughs> you know, we were doing well, uh, but I I just had to re-enter sort of like society at a very slow pace. And so I thought, you know what, I do want to contribute financially to the family still. And so, you know, I thought maybe a online career would be the way to go. So a year ago, I embarked on some schooling on digital marketing. And the first thing that they teach you is that you need to find your niche. You have to find your audience. Who are you going to talk to? So, you know, in the back of my mind, I had this little niggling feeling about our story, but I kind of set it aside and I went and tried all different kinds of niches, you know, our homesteading niche or empty nester niche, you know, things like that. It just wasn't working. And finally, after almost a year of that, the schooling and then the trying to find my place in the advertising world, God really spoke to me and he said, you know what, Emily, it's time. It's time to tell your story. And I had just stumbled on to this amazing woman who was teaching how to start a podcast. Her name is Stephanie Gass from stephaniegass.com and we have been like going full bore into this podcast thing now knowing that it's the best way that we can tell our story to the most people around the world. Yes, we know that God's redemptive nature is to purchase things back from where they were. That is, you know, what redemption is about. And God's work is always about sharing that with somebody else. It's always about uh, not keeping it to yourself. We live, we work, we laugh, love, and heal and get hurt in community. So now we're doing this telling our story in a podcast community. So Emily, on to the next question. What are we going to hear in this podcast? Well, I think the biggest thing that we want you to hear is hope. You know, there's all kinds of devastation in relationships. You know, sometimes it can feel like it's over, like life is over, the relationship is over, there's no hope. And we want to just tell our story because it's full of hope. It's full of pain. It's full of like trauma. <laughs> you know, the betrayal stories that are out there are just, they're painful. 
and ours is no different, but we have a lot of hope to share. We have a lot of God moments to share, and He is amazing. He's the one that saved us, redeemed us, and brought us to the place where we are now today, a place that we never thought we'd be, you know, four years ago. So you will hear a lot of hope in our podcast. I think that also what you're going to hear in this podcast also is that you're not alone. It was one of the biggest lies that kept me trapped for so long is that I was alone. Nobody understood me. If anybody really knew who I was, they wouldn't want to know me. They would get rid of me. And when I found recovery, one of the most profound things that I felt from the very beginning was that I was not alone for the first time. And I could actually start healing from there. Yes, that's amazing, isn't it? And so on to the next question, Johnny, what won't they hear in this podcast? You are not going to hear judgment in this podcast. Emily and I were both very humbled by this process in the beginning. We believed that our marriage was perfect and I wanted it to be perfect, even though I couldn't do my part to do that. I really kind of thought in some way that I had it all together. I had a good job. I provided for my family. Uh, we were schooling our kids the way we wanted them to be raised. We were parenting with purpose and then come to find out that I was not able to hold all that up. I was living a secret double life, all the while projecting this image of being an upright, good Christian man. And boy, did I get that all wrong. So I guess another thing that you're not going to hear on this podcast is uh, pretense. No pretending here. Right. This is our real and raw story. So get ready. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, it's like we said from before, we're not professional podcasters. We're still trying to figure out the microphone and we're going to be as real as it is appropriate. Yes, because transparency and vulnerability builds community and we're here to help the community who hears our story to find some answers and to find some hope. So Emily, this takes us to our last question. What do we hope to accomplish with this podcast? Well, what we hope to accomplish is giving people an open door to talk about their own pain, talk about their own betrayal stories, or their own trauma stories, abuse stories, whatever it is that they've been hiding in their heart, that they've been keeping in the dark, that they have not let anybody get close enough to hear it. And people who are in the shadows, you know, just crying out to be seen, to be heard, and to be accepted. We want to make sure that what we're doing here gives somebody else the opportunity to share their story with somebody else and in that way to start the healing process. If we can inspire you from a place to where you're hurting so much today to an understanding that true intimacy could actually be possible. I know you're thinking right now that I don't even know if intimacy is possible at all or maybe what is intimacy? Right. <laughs> really, what, I mean, what is it? Is it physical intimacy? Is it emotional intimacy? Is it spiritual intimacy? The truth is, is that it's all three of those. When you line up all three of those, you're a whole person. So that's our podcast in a nutshell. We really look forward to you joining us each week as we unfold all of these topics that we're going to be going through as we talk about things like, can I recover from the damage that I've done? Can I ever trust again? Is there hope for my marriage? These are the things that we're going to unfold as we go. So thank you for joining us today. Our next episode, Emily is going to tell her story of my betrayal to her. You're not going to want to miss that. So until next time, marriage is redeemed, hearts renewed on Beyond Broken Vows podcast. Thank you so much for joining us today. And before you go, if this podcast encouraged you and you're feeling some hope for today, Please share this show with someone else you know who is going through a similar situation and needs to know that they're not alone. One of the best ways you can help us reach more people is to leave us a written review on Apple Podcast. And don't forget to hit subscribe so you don't miss out on upcoming episodes. And as always, we would love to hear questions from you that we can answer in our midweek show. Just email us at support at beyondbrokenvows.com. Until next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you. 
May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.